Welcome back to another episode of Off the Bench, Northern Arizona Prep Sports, presented by Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Services and Cottonwood Parks and Recreation. I'm your host, Philip Catathamo. We have got a great show in store for you this week. Later in the program, we'll be joined by Chino Valley High School baseball coach Jason Olson. He'll join the show to speak about the end of the season, the plan for the offseason, and break down the rotation. We'll then be joined by Flagstaff High School track and field coach Matthew Barkeen. He'll break down state competition, speak about the section, and discuss the long-term benefits to track and field. And when we return from break, we'll be joined by Lee Williams High School baseball coach Zachary Smith. He'll speak about his first season as head coach of the program, who he is looking to bring up next season, and talk about the program's strong group of returners. All of that and a whole lot more coming up right here on Off the Bench. Stay with us. We will be right back. Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. Welcome back to Off the Bench, Northern Arizona Prep Sports, presented by Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Services and Cottonwood Parks and Recreation. I'm joined now by Lee Williams High School baseball coach, Zachary Smith. Coach Smith, welcome back onto the show. Thanks for having me again. Well, we're very happy to have you, Coach. The Volunteers finished the 2022 season with an 11-6 and overall record, going 6-6 six and six in the region, earning them the number 16 rank in the 4A. Uh, coach, how did you feel the regular season went? Yeah, you know, it's considering how many ups and downs we had, um, you know, throughout the middle part of the season, um, going, you know, we knew going into the last part of the season after we we talked um, as a staff, we needed to be, you know, a certain number, certain amount of losses to get ourselves into a good spot to be able to contend to ho- hopefully host a playing game or get into a playing game. And so, you know, we had an extremely successful season, though. Well, Coach, despite the ups and downs, I mean, how did you keep the group focused and how did you keep them together? You know, that came from our our leadership, um, our core leadership group that we had, you know, all of our seniors, um, our sophomores, juniors, freshmen, you know, they all kind of said, hey, this is what we need to do. We can't mess around. We got to do, we got to take care of business, do our jobs. And, you know, they they responded well. You know, we were, our backs were up against the wall. We didn't know where we were going to be and, you know, didn't want to, have be like teams in the past and um, kind of leave it up to the AIA of where we're going to end up and, you know, took things in our own hands. Yeah. Um, you know, with that number 16 rank, you guys get an opportunity to take on the eventual 4A state champion, number four, Canyon Del Oro Dorados. Uh, coach, how'd you feel your team did in that one? <laughs> you know, outside of getting beat by three touchdowns, um, you know. The, I didn't want to probably, say it. Yeah, that's the best team I've I've seen in my coaching career. Um, you know, I've been coaching nine years and, you know, that's top to bottom one through nine. They, it was, they deserve to win state. And, you know, we kind of knew going in after we got done playing them that they're going to be extremely tough to beat, um, especially down at their place. Um, you know, it was a long, long trip for us. We kind of had some unfortunate circumstances um, just with prom the night before. And then we had to get on a van and drive ourselves at four in the morning. You know, it's just kind of a, just kind of a things that didn't quite lead up to the way I would like it, but, you know, kids played, we played as best as we could. And, you know, in the end, that's all we can ask for. Uh, You know, coach um, playoff experience, you know, something you can't teach is experience. And obviously, you know, despite the, the end score, cause you're right. Canyon Del Oro for baseball. I mean, I got a chance to see their softball team 
uh, in the four. Another another program that made it all the way to the state championship. Uh, and and the softball team was the same way up and down. That one through nine is is something else, man. I don't know what's going on in Tucson, but they got some real good uh, athletes uh, in, in those areas. South Point Catholic is another school uh, who who also carries a lot of really really good talent. But uh, you know, like I said, coach, experience is something you can't teach. How does this experience, despite of course the way it went, uh, help your younger players going forward and the program, I guess, as a whole? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it shows our guys, you know, our younger guys, what the standard is to be able to compete at that level. You know, we weren't quite ready for that type of baseball yet. Um, you know, we hadn't, we hadn't been to the playoffs since 2018 and this group of kids that we had now were freshmen and they didn't even play. So, you know, we had a group of kids that hadn't been in the playoffs yet. And so, you know, that atmosphere, the, um, attention to little itty bitty details that you know we preach all year that magnifies itself in postseason play and you know it's you're playing with the big dogs when you're in the top 16 you're one of the final 16 and you know we took the right step forward as a program and our young guys got really good experience they got to see what that atmosphere was like what that play the level of play was like and so we really you know, it's going to catapult us into next year. And that 21 to nothing is going to be our calling card next year. Well, uh, Coach, what did you tell the guys after that tough loss? I mean, you know, obviously you guys had the long bus ride from, you know, Mojave County all the way down to Tucson. Um, you know, what what did you tell the guys after that game was done? No, I just I was proud of them. You know, yeah. we had a lot of un- unforeseen circumstances pop up, you know, um, with prom and, you know, having to adjust our, our travel time because we were – we were scheduled to leave and stay the night originally. Oh, man. But we had to, you know, kind of derail that a little bit just so that way our kids, you know, we sat down as a staff and that was our best option was to leave at, you know, 4 a.m. and just hope that they got some sleep on the van. Um, but just that I was proud of them, you know, and um, the senior class left a, our, our program in a better spot and, you know, our, our young guys – understand that we got a good core coming back and so they get the level that we need to be at if we want to compete against the canyon del oros the south point catholics the post and buttes mesquites of, of arizona and so you know we're up for the challenge and you know we just hope put our put our head down and grind this summer well uh, coach speaking about that senior class uh ethan klenke one of the guys who led the team in batting average batted over 400 this season devin santos another guy who played really really well for you I mean, what can you say about that senior group? You talk about some of these guys coming in. Obviously, the program hasn't been to the playoffs since 2018. So a lot of these guys, you said it, never got a chance to see the playoffs, but did get an opportunity this season. Um, it's unfortunate it comes in their last year. But I mean, what I mean, how, how reliable was that senior group this year? And what do they mean to you in your first year as the, the head coach of the program? Yeah, you know, they've played a lot of baseball in their time at Lee Williams. Um, and, you know, just having that to be able to, kind of lean back on as a first year coach, it's, it's, it's a blessing in itself to be able to have that group that's close together and, you know, they gel well and they, they do everything together and, you know, they invite all the the young guys to come hang out with them. You know, I can't, when we went down to Tucson for our tournament down at South Point, um, you know, they're all hanging out in one room, you know, all 14 guys are hanging out in one room and it just, it stinks and it's hot and it's, (laughs) So, you know, that's that's the kind of group that we had is they were, they were tight, they were close. And, you know, our, our seniors, they have a special place in my heart. You know, I've had them since they were sophomores. And, you know, for them to be able to accept me, not only just moving when I moved down, but for me to take the reins and them just kind of take it and run with it for what we were preaching as a staff, it, it's, it, it couldn't have been a better situation for me. When you talk about that group of guys, you know, just bonding really well. I mean, is there anything, you know, that you guys were doing to build that team chemistry or is it really just these guys being around each other for so long and and really just meshing well? Yeah, it was just them. You know, they're 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 just dudes being dudes. You know, they're just hanging out and doing whatever they want to do. And, you know, they all go eat. They all go get breakfast together and lunch. And, you know, they go freaking have pregame meals that I don't know of and I don't want to know of. (laughs) Um, but you know, it's just a great group of kids to have. Well, you transition that solid senior class, uh, you know, into a very solid sophomore class. Your sophomores played phenomenal for you this year. 
Uh, Coach, what did you like about that group this season, and, and what do you think they can accomplish in the next two years? Yeah, you know, the sky's the limit for that sophomore group. Um, you know, we had kids that never played varsity baseball that stepped up in a gigantic spot for us. You know, the only sophomore that we've had with varsity experience was Nick Kennedy, and, you know, he did, he did a great job stepping in and, you know, being that, that consistent anchor at first base and in our lineup. Um, unfortunately, you know, he had to take care of his body a little bit, and, you know, he had to get labrum surgery or shoulder surgery there towards the end of the year, so we didn't have him for the last four. But, uh, you know, Dylan Towning stepped in, did a phenomenal job. He's a great person, great kid, great athlete. And, you know, he's going to – he's got an extremely bright future ahead of him. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just – it's really nice to have a good core of young kids. And, you know, we got great kids coming up from the eighth grade group that are going to contribute – you know, or have a chance to contribute next year and compete for a varsity spot just because we are losing 12 dudes. Yeah, but, but I mean, uh, more so, you know, we'll talk about some of those eighth graders along with some guys down at JV. But, uh, you know, uh, like I said, Coach, just looking at the roster, I mean, you guys really are returning some solid talent. I mean, you lose a couple seniors next year. You're going to lose a couple seniors as well. Um, can we talk briefly about that junior class that are going to be your seniors next season? Absolutely. You know, Troy Edwards, he's, our, he's a staple mark of our not only just our program, in baseball, but, you know, football as well. And also he's, you know, class president in the school and, you know, he does a great job just being a Troy Edwards, you know, he's, he's there to have fun. You know, baseball is not his favorite sport, but he's out there and competes as best as he can. Uh, Braden Peterson is going to come in, step in and do it. He's going to have to fill a role for us in our pitching staff and in the field whenever we need him. Um, and, you know, we got another kid, Robert Brackett, that's got a chance to compete and get possibly get a spot. Um, you know, our, our junior class has a lot of baseball in them. They've been playing since they were little itty bitty kids in the little league here at Kingman. And, you know, they're going to, they're going to be our leaders and the guys that we really rely on next year. Um, you know, kind of similar question to the junior class and he only had a couple freshmen on the roster this season, but, uh, you know, again, guys are going to be coming back next season. How are you feeling about that that group? Oh, great. You know, Bear Bowman um, stepped in, had a phenomenal freshman year, um, put him in some tight spots and some some different spots that, um, you know, he wasn't used to. And, you know, he, he didn't complain. He just he stuck his head down and was a, was a soldier. Um, you know, Isaiah Roscoe is another freshman that's going to be phenomenal. Um, he's got a chance to really step in and, you know, earn a spot right away in the summer. Um, I also forgot to mention uh, Noah Petrusky as a sophomore. Um, you know, he kind of gets lost in the mix just because he's, you know, it feels like he's been around for so long. Um, and he's going to be our one of our staple marks in our, our rotation and in the field. Um, you know, Riley Files, another kid, you might remember him from football. Um, he's got a chance to earn a spot in the outfield or in the infield. He's one of the best natural athletes I think we've, we've had at Lee Williams. So, you know, our freshman class is – it's they're, we're going to be dangerous. Uh, looking at the JB team, coach, uh, very similar question uh, regarding, you know, who might you be looking to bring up next season? Um, you know, Kenny Kabanovich is, he was a freshman this year, contributed really well for the JV program. Uh, Cruz Yocum, who's another sophomore that gets lost in the mix. Um, he's, or he's a stud, you know, he's going to be a good athlete, good outfielder for us, you know, consistent at the plate. Um, Vaughn Anderson's another kid that, you know, coming off Tommy John as a freshman, um, he's got a chance to improve and, you know, vie for a varsity spot. Um, you know, there's too many. I don't have enough time to talk about all of them. But, you know, our JV group and our JV coach, Shane Peterson, does a fantastic job with them all year. Um, uh, you, you know, Coach, you talked about that eighth grade group. Um, you know, how does do, – do you guys do any kind of a program with the, with the middle school? Is there any kind of summer thing? We'll talk about – the baseball program's off-season plan in just a little bit. But, you know, I, I, I had a similar conversation with a couple other coaches, you know, when they've got that sort of eighth grade, eighth, eighth grade group coming up. Uh, Chino Valley High School is, is a good example. We'll talk to Coach Olson about that eighth grade group uh, in just a little bit. But, uh, Coach Smith, I mean, what do you guys do with those eighth graders uh, to get them prepared for the high school season? Um, you know, we rely heavily on our middle school program itself. You know, um, Mike Collins is our he's the head guy at White Cliffs for us, um, you know, they're our feeder school. You know, we also get a bunch of kids from Kingman Middle School, you know, in the academy as well. Um, but, you know, we can't touch them for AIA until June right. 6th. 
And so, you know, we're just waiting until June 6th to get them, um, you know, see what, they, what, they, what kind of skill level they have. You know, I've watched them for the last three years here at the middle school. So I kind of have a good idea of some of them. But, you know, they're, they're a special group. You know, they're really – they're a lot like our senior group that we just had. Um, you know, super close, super tight. They do, you know, really athletic. You know, they're going to be not only just good for us in baseball, but in all the other sports as well. Again, we were speaking with Lee Williams High School baseball coach Zach Smith. Uh, coach Smith and the Volunteers finished the 2022 season with an 11 and six overall record, six and six in the region. Got a first round matchup against uh, Canyon Del Oro. Uh, season is done, Coach. Um, how'd you feel about your first year coaching the program? I mean, you accomplished a lot making the playoffs since 2018. Uh, it is it quite a feat to accomplish in your first year? How'd you feel it went? It went well. You know, we as staff coming in, you know, we kind of knew already what was going to happen. And, you know, we set that as the mark and, you know, we kind of worked towards a, a, a goal, a main goal on, you know, that was our focus was just taking everything one game at a time, setting ourselves up for a playoff position. And, you know, we got there. You know, um, the, our region this year was extremely stacked up and they were phenomenal and they just, our region's tough. And, you know, we, some games, you know, we felt like we should have won, we dropped. Um, that's just because our region's tough. Yeah. But, you know, overall though, it's it was, all the coaches were fantastic. You know, I can't thank Eric enough from Mingus. You know, he helped me out a ton. Also, um, Mike Siffling down in Coconino, he helped me out a ton. Um, you know, we're all really close together as a as a as a region itself with coaches. So it's it was a lot of fun. Do you think that transition from Coach O'Boyle to you was a little easier because you had already kind of had roots in the program already? Yeah, I think so. And you know, a lot of our main philosophies and you know language was all the same. So you know, having those having that luxury of for the kids to you know not have to completely change everything. It was it kind of. Gave us gave them a peace of mind that you know nothing's going to change, and you know we just keep working and keep getting better. What did you learn in that first year, coach? Is there anything anything that you'd like to change going into year two? Um, you know, biggest thing I think I learned was just you know there's a little bit more that goes into the head coach role. Okay. You know, a lot more paperwork. You know, filling out the the POs the, and all the paper, all the other stuff that you have to do, set up all the meetings and the you know, the, the banquets and all the, the extra stuff that goes along with it. But, you know, it was a blast and, you know, I wouldn't trade this year for anything. Do you feel you were able to accomplish all the goals you had set out uh, for this season? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we had a good cornerstone, good stepping stone towards next year. Um, and, you know, our future is extremely bright. We got to, we're going we're gonna to be competitive. We're going to be scrappy. We're going to be blue collared and, you know, we're going to, we're going to work for everything that we get. Uh, what's, what's the plan for the off season here, coach? Are you guys going to be participating in any tournaments? If so, when, and who might you be playing against? Yeah, you know, we're, our, our summer schedule is full. Um, we got, we got, we're going to play Havasu and, you know, some of the local teams around here. Um, and then we're going to go down to a couple tournaments down on Bullhead and, um, you know, just kind of keep things, you know, just really mainly focus on our approaches and the fundamentals and just making sure that, you know, we leave ourselves in a good spot to where we can pick it back up in December when we start winning ball. Where are some areas that you would like to focus on this offseason, Coach? I mean, I know you'll, you'll be getting a few kids who will be participating in your summer program. You know, summer vacation is what it is. So some people go out of town, some don't. Uh, but, you know, just for you, I mean, where, where are some areas that you would like to focus in on uh, for some of those guys who are there during the summer? Yeah, you know, pitching. Pitching is our biggest one. I think that was kind of that was kind of our Achilles heel um, for most of the year. You know, when we struggle is because we didn't pitch well. Yeah. Um, we got to focus on throwing strikes consistently, competing in, in every pitch and, you know, just having an approach up on the mound, you know, also fielding. You know, we, okay. man alive, I might have broke a state record for errors in just a handful of games. But, you know, we, we just got to be consistent and we just got to be, you know, have something that we can lean back on, you know, in case our, our bats aren't working. Uh, Coach, I, I didn't get a chance to ask you about the pitching rotation. Um, uh, you will be returning some solid players. We talked a little bit about Nick Kennedy. He's going to be coming back. Just a couple pitching instances for him, but a great ERA in his like two to three appearances this year. Uh, Barrett Bowman's a guy who's coming back. Troy Edwards will be back for his senior year. Um, just more so about the rotation, Coach. Um, 
Uh, obviously, you kind of already expressed your views about it, but uh, how do these guys approach that position and what do each of them offer when they're on the mound? You know, everybody offers something different. Um, you know, each guy's unique and, you know, that's what's going to make our pitching staff. Um, it's going to make it work next year. You know, guys, we're not going to have a specific number one guy that we can throw out every Tuesday or Thursday. Um, you know, it's going to be by committee and, you know, it's going to have to be, you know, it's going to have to be a system system win. And, you know, our, our pitching coach and or the guy that or guy that calls pitches, you know, Coach John Blake, and he does a fantastic job mixing in. He's got some great ideas for us to work on this summer. And, you know, this winter, just to make sure that we're good. But, um, yeah, you know, Nick is going to get on the mound a lot more. Um, Barrett's going to have to – he's going to be have to be a, a starter guy consistently. Noah's going to be a fantastic addition to our to our rotation. Troy's going to get a lot of spot starts. And we got a lot of young arms, you know, freshmen to be sophomores that are going to really, really compete to be a, a starter at the varsity level. Any guys competing in club coach? And uh, if not, any plans to potentially start a club program? Yeah, you know, we do have our club program that we run with, through the school. Um, well, it's not technically with the school, but, um, you know, our Kingman Storm program does a fantastic job. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all run it. We're not affiliated with the school. We just practice at the school. And so, you know, we can do whatever we want and, you know, kind of get our guys experience and practice and you know, nothing changes in our practice plan and our approach. We just get better every day, and then we get to go out and have fun on the weekends and go out and play in tournaments. Uh, just real quick, Coach, uh, before we let you go, uh, again, is there anything else you want to say to, to the seniors who went through your program this this last year? Yeah, you know, they're, I already gave my spiel. I about, I about had a dang meltdown at the banquet the other night. Um, <laughs> you know, they hold, like I said, they hold a special place in my heart, and they're some of my favorite people that I've ever met coaching um, and it's not just the, that student to, or that coach to athlete role it's you know they're great they're great great men yeah. and you know they're going to be extremely successful and I couldn't be any more proud of them to you know I can't wait to see what they do in life and you know they always got a, they always got a spot on my staff no matter what he is Lee Williams high school baseball coach Zachary Smith coach Smith congratulations on finishing your first of many years as the head coach of the Lee Williams high school baseball program we look forward to bringing you back on when spring gets started. Awesome. Thank you again for doing this. This is awesome. You know, I know the first time we did this, you know, I got a lot of compliments about it. And so, you know, it's, you do a fantastic job. And, you know, I look forward to many years getting to talk with you about Lee Williams baseball. Well, thank you very much. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Chino Valley baseball coach Jason Olson right here on Off the Bench. Don't go anywhere. things we can count on every year a new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern arizona jackson hewitt tax service locally owned and operated by lewis rice since 1997 is here for you all year long your neighborhood jackson hewitt tax office will help you in all of your taxing situations electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at jackson hewitt tax service get more in return call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you Welcome back to Off the Bench, Northern Arizona Prep Sports, presented by Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Services and Cottonwood Parks and Recreation. I'm joined now by Chino Valley High School baseball coach Jason Olson. Coach Olson, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me again. Well, we're very happy to have you, Coach. Uh, the Cougars finished the 2022 season with a 12-7 and overall record, uh, a 6-4 and record in region, earning them the number 18 rank in the 3A. Uh, coach, just in general, how did you feel the, uh, the the regular season went? I felt it went pretty good. Um, spent a lot of time overcoming a lot of stuff that we weren't really expecting. You know, we started the season off with one of our better players breaking his tailbone during basketball. 
Uh, you know, then we had another one of our players, bombs, passed away unexpectedly. Uh, we went through a period there where it seemed like every three or four days, two or three, four, five different people were sick. Um, took us a while to get our regular starting lineup back. One of our relievers didn't finish the year with us because he had an infection. So we overcame a lot. Um, but with that being said, you know, we finished strong. I think we won eight out of 11 at one point, I think we won six or seven in a row, won that playoff or play in game to get into the first round of playoffs. And, you know, we ended it the way we were hoping um, that we would other than the final loss, of course. Right. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, that matchup between number two, ALA Gilbert North, and of course the Cougars, but, you know, coach, despite all those, those struggles that you guys had, I mean, how did, how did you kind of keep the group together uh, throughout all of the very much like, you know, tossle and toss and turning that the uh, the season had for you. I mean, how did you keep those guys focused? You know, I, I don't know if there was just one thing that we did. Um, you know, one of the things we preach is every day is a different day. And we try to get better. Um, you know, we try not letting things build up. We take things not only at bat to at bat, but pitch to pitch. So, you know, a lot of communication with all of us, um, trying to keep everybody, you know, in line. But one of the things that really helped, and I think I said it on the show last time, is we were so deep that we were able sometimes to lose some players. We may not have had the even um, skills that replaced it, but we had enough people on the bench that we were able to put them in with, with no doubt that at some point they would do something good and be able to um, get, get us through until whoever it was came back or even some of them earned themselves a starting role later on in the season because they did such a good job for us. Well, uh, you know, like I said, you guys get that first round matchup against number two, ALA Gilbert North. Uh, Coach, what'd you think about that one? And how'd you get, how'd you like your team's efforts? Oh, I can't complain about our efforts. Um, you know, it was, there was a couple innings there that I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Gilbert North was sweating a little bit. You know, we uh, we were down two nothing early, and then we came back to take a four two lead. They came back and tied it. We took a five four lead into the bottom of the set or bottom of the sixth, um, and they were able to push a couple runs across that ultimately gave them the eight five win. But you know, even when we came up at the top of the seventh, we had the bases loaded, so we had a chance. We you know we had the the uh, winning run on base and the or the tying run on base and the winning run at bat. So yeah. even after all that was said, we still had a chance to, you know, tie it or at least get that game closer in the last inning. You know, we put everything we absolutely had into it. And I know if you talk to their coaching staff over there, they probably had at least a little bit of, of scaredness uh, for a little bit because we played a great game. Well, I mean, how does that feel, you know, in terms of confidence going into next season? I mean, we'll talk about playoff experience in general, but I mean, coach, you guys go into – this isn't like a play in round game where you guys were playing against a fellow lower seed. I mean, this was the number two team in the state where at one point, like you just said, coach, you guys were leading. You were never out of the game. You guys always had opportunities to either take the lead or tie things up. So, I mean, what is that confidence? What kind of confidence does that give you guys going into next season going, Hey, we came in as a 15, but we battled hard against number two. You know, I think it's a confidence builder. You know, it's, it's something we've been telling them, you know, even, even when we were struggling, you know, we were a lot better than our record looked. We were a lot better than a lot of games we were playing. It was just trying to get them on board with that. And, you know, even looking at it, we had, there was four total losses that we had um, where the team, where it was against teams that were in the state championship game. Two against Northwest Christian, one against Gilbert um, in the 3A conference. But one of our losses was also the South Point, who's the 4A conference runner up. So, you know, just looking at a lot of this overall stuff um, and how we did against these teams that went on to either ultimately get to the championship game or win the championship game, and we were right there with them. So, yeah. you know, hopefully they, they take to heart what we said, that we could definitely be there, and, you know, that could definitely be us real soon. It almost creates a, an unfortunate what-if scenario, Coach, because if you guys beat – you know, ALA Gilbert North, like you said, you guys have already taken on some tough competition. You probably would have fared well going forward. So, you know, it, it is a tough what if, but um, regardless, coach, a, a phenomenal season this year, um, you know, more so getting back into playoff experience. Um, I know that you're going to be welcoming back a lot of, of guys from this season. Um, but what does this playoff appearance mean to your younger players, you know, your freshmen and sophomores? 
hopefully it just means, well, a couple different things. Hopefully it just gave them the experience because we had a lot of those younger kids that played in that game. Yeah. Um, on top of the experience, the, the guys that maybe didn't play um, or just sat around looking was, you know, that we can absolutely 100% play with some of these higher ranked teams that are in the state and even have a chance to beat those teams. So definitely a big confidence builder, hopefully um, is how they see it through their eyes. Also. Uh, you have a, a smaller senior class this year, only a handful of guys. Uh, what can you say about their contributions this year? And what'd you tell them after the season was over? You know, well, first of all, I just told them thank you for all their hard work and efforts. Um, you know, it's going to be tough to see them, you know, especially four or five of them were starters. Um, and played almost every single game for, for us. Um, but, you know, the big thing is they were team leaders, and that's one of the things we needed this year that we didn't have last year or the year before was just a, a group of older guys that were not trying to lead but actually were leaders. And when they spoke, the younger kids listened and, you know, basically did what they had asked. And, you know, their leadership is going to be missed. Their playing abilities are going to be missed. And just in general, whether they decide to – be baseball players or they decide to be uh, pianists uh, professionally, you know, whatever they do, they're going to be able to succeed because they're just great human beings. Well, taking a look at that core that you're bringing back, um, you've got some talented sophomores and Brody King and Hector Vasquez who will be coming back next season. Uh, Holabird Hunter, who's probably got the best baseball name that I've heard so far. He'll be back as a senior next season, along with Michael Velasco. Um, so, Coach, just in terms of your returners, I mean, how excited are you about this group coming up uh, next season? I'm definitely excited. They're all going to have the experience because most of them played this year. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really one of the big things, just as an example, is no one's going to be as good as Riley Roscoff was. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to have is we're going to have three and four and five and six players that are going to be able to cover what he took. So ultimately, you know, we're losing one guy that's irreplaceable, but we're replacing him with a whole bunch of different guys that can do a lot of good things for us and hopefully give us deeper pitching rotations, deeper batting orders, and the ability to do a lot of things on the baseball field in general. Uh, what about that freshman group? Again, a smaller group, just a couple of freshmen on the, the varsity roster this year. Obviously, you talked about, you know, those guys getting an opportunity to play not only down the stretch of the season, but of course in the playoffs as well. So, I mean, going off of the playoff experience that some of those guys have gotten, I mean, how are you feeling about this freshman group as well coming into next season? We like them a lot. Obviously, we had Freddie Garcia, who started almost every game for us. Um, we'll be returning. Uh, starting off in the summer, we're taking two kids from the JV team that were freshmen last year in Joshua Parton and Joshua Easton. Um, they'll be playing a lot of A-ball summer games with us. Um, and then there's another probably two or three that will start off on the B team. Mm -hmm. um, not because they're any less better just because of the position they play in numbers, um, but there's a good chance that they're going to have an opportunity to make varsity once it comes around to that point also. Yeah, um, uh, looking more so. Again, we're speaking with Chino Valley High School baseball coach Jason Olson. Uh, the Cougars finished the 2022 season with a 12-7 and overall record, 6-4 and in region, earning them a first-round matchup against uh, number two ALA Gilbert North. Uh, coach, um, Kind of looking, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the rotation. Um, you know, you'll be welcoming back a couple guys from the pitching staff, but uh, just curious, you know, what did you like from your pitching staff this, this season? Um, who are you looking to get back? And, and what, do the, what do these guys bring to the table when they're on the mound? Hopefully I remember exactly what you asked me. Um, and it was like five or six things. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had it, and then you kept going and going and going. <laughs> um, you know, the biggest thing is, that's probably where we lose the most is on the pitching mound um, with Riley and, and JP McNerney leaving because they're both seniors. Right. Um, but we threw a lot of guys this year. And so they definitely have that ability and that confidence and the experience that we need. And, you know, really what we kind of look at as, as a whole from the pitching staff is just being able to get ahead of guys and throw strikes. Okay. We don't have to, you know, throw hard. We don't have to overpower people. We just got to be able to change speeds and hit spots, which we have a lot of guys that can. Yeah. You know, last year we only threw a handful of pitchers all year. This year we threw a lot more. And next year is probably going to be even more. You know, we have Michael Velasco, who's somebody that's definitely going to be able to go 100 pitches every time he goes out. Um, but we're not sure about everybody else. So, you know, we may be one of those teams, especially for a while, we might be throwing three and four guys each game. 
um, just to get us through until we can get some confidence and see who can build up their innings and, and be able to carry us. But it's, it's a good problem to have with that depth um, in our pitching staff that we can kind of look to anybody. We don't have to just look at one or two to hopefully get us by. We'll be able to, you know, look at two and three and four guys each game to get us through and help us win. You talk, uh, you talk about a guy like Michael Velasco, who, you know, obviously was a, a, a portion of that, that pitching staff. And you, know, you talk about kind of finding that, that go-to guy or a couple go-to guys, but I'm curious, coach, in, in years past, um, what indications have you gotten when you kind of see a, a pitcher make that turn, you know, as a sophomore, maybe they had a high ERA, but starting off their junior year, they're starting to pitch well, commands looking good. Are there any kind of other indications or other things you look for to go, okay, this might be my next guy on the mound when, when he comes up next season or, or maybe a little down the line. Does that make sense? It does. And I think a lot of it is a mix between body language and just how they handle themselves. Okay. Um, you know, you can see the confidence sometimes you can see, you know, guy goes out there and gets three up, three down, but he comes off the mound and it just looks like he's tired mentally and physically, you know, he's working a lot harder than you think he works, even though he went up three up and three down. And, you know, that's one of the things, especially as you get older, you kind of see that decline a little bit. And now they get three up and three down. It looks like they didn't even do anything, which, you know, kind of tells us, okay, they don't have to think so much. You know, they're relying on their stuff. They're just going out there doing what they're asked to do, making pitches. Um, so that's one of the big things that we kind of see and that you kind of notice from a lot of young high school pitchers getting older and becoming more experienced high school pitchers. Well, uh, you know, Coach, we talked a little bit about some of the guys you'll be getting back who were on the varsity roster this year. What about down at JV? Anybody you're excited to bring up next season? Every single one of them. That's good. <laughs> no. So, yeah, uh, in particular, like I had said uh, a little while ago, Josh Parton and Josh Easton were playing a lot of A-team summer ball with us. Um, they're both outfielders, um, but Josh Parton can catch. He can also play the infield. Um, we have Emilio uh, Rocha who he's the kid I was talking about. He'll stay on the B team for the summer, um, but just for the experience and getting more at bats and the experience down there, but somebody that's definitely going to have the chance to make the varsity roster once it comes around to that time in the spring. Um, those are the three main ones we're looking at. Well, coach, you talk about that A and B team during the summer. Obviously that's going to be a part of the off season, um, but I'm curious, any other plans for the off season? Um, who you, are you guys going to be looking to participate in any tournaments? If so, where, and who might you guys be taking on? So the A team were scheduled for six tournaments starting Memorial day weekend up here in Prescott. It's the one that most everybody comes up here for, mm -hmm. um, down a few teams. I'm not sure how many are here, but it's going to be held at four different sites. Chino Valley high school is going to be one of the host sites. So we'll have teams coming in and out Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then the following four weekends is just Saturday, Sunday tournaments. We'll play two games Saturday, two games Sunday. It could be anywhere from Prescott, Bradshaw Mountain High School, Mingus, the Flagstaff schools. A lot of teams come up from Phoenix, obviously, to get out of the heat. Um, we play in these because there's not a lot of 3A teams that play in these. So we're seeing 4A, 5A, and 6A teams all summer. And then we're going to finish our summer out up in Flagstaff for the 4th of July tournament they hold up there every year. And it's going to be the same thing, you know, not a whole bunch of small teams, a lot of bigger teams, hopefully a lot better baseball to, you know, just get us ready. You know, we're, we're trying to develop. We're not worried about winning and losing so much in the summer. We're worried about developing, developing not only guys we're looking at playing next year, but trying to develop the guys that just aren't there yet and, and just make it a whole other staff to begin with. Yeah, that was going to be my next question was more so just kind of how you utilize the offseason to get you into next season. And and clearly it's 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 really that it's just focusing on development and trying to get these guys up to speed for the next level. So, um, uh, Coach, just real quick, um, how has your offseason routine changed? Do you always like to participate in these midsummer tournaments uh, or, or, you know, is it something relatively new for the program? Uh, just how has your offseason plan changed since you took over the program? The only thing that's really changed it was COVID. We okay. weren't allowed to do things for a while. This was kind of the plan all the way through. Um, the only difference that we've really made is the last two years, our B team has been current players that were on JV and then the incoming freshmen. Mm -hmm. This year, we're adding incoming eighth graders to it also. Try to get to some of these guys just a year earlier. Um, really just to kind of introduce ourselves 
teach them about what Chino Valley baseball is about, just kind of get them into the habit of what we're looking for a little bit of a year earlier, and hopefully their development will go slightly quicker than um, it has in the past. Yeah, that'll be great. I mean, obviously, that'll set you guys up perfectly to know who's coming in uh, uh, from the eighth grade level going in and possibly playing at Chino Valley. So some future Cougars might be uh, taking the field for you, Coach Olson. But uh, again, uh, we are speaking with Chino Valley High School baseball coach Jason Olson. Coach Olson, as usual, I, I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you again for coming on and answering some of my very long winded questions. But uh, it's always great to speak with you. Have a safe off season. We'll talk again when we get closer to the uh, start of spring. Sounds good, and I'll get a better background next time for you. <laughs> yeah, not as fun with the uh, without the baseball field behind you, but uh, right. as usual, Coach, I, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you again. Thank you. Take care. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Flagstaff track and field coach Matthew Barkeen right here on Off the Bench. Don't go anywhere. Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. Welcome back to Off the Bench, Northern Arizona Prep Sports, presented by Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Services and Cottonwood Parks and Recreation. I'm joined now by Flagstaff High School track and field coach Matt Barkeen. Coach Barkeen, welcome back onto the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Well, um, the Eagles, just like uh, most of everyone here in track and in the track and field season, have wrapped up their year at state. Um, we got a chance to touch uh, touch base with a couple track and field coaches this season, Coach Barkeen. 27 kids making it to state this year. Let's talk about how you guys perform. You know, they did really well. Yeah, 27. So it's about what we typically do. We usually see like 30, um, high 20. So it was exciting that even without COVID kind of affecting us, that we were still be able to bounce back and um, show the state that we're a solid program here. Well, more specifically, Coach, I mean, how did those 27 fare? Uh, who, who performed well? Who, any, any personal records sent? Uh, how did state competition in general go? Um, so we had two definitely huge standouts. So our first one is Mia Hall. Um, she was going in number one, ranked in the two mile and the one mile. For the two mile, she won the thing. And when you compare her to all four divisions, she beat everyone there as well. Wow. Um, she she did awesome. And then at the same time, she struggled a little bit with the one mile. Uh, she still did really well, but the heat kind of got to her, I think, a little bit on Saturday when we had our last round. It's about 102. Mm-hmm. So um, us Flagstaff people kind of might have struggled a little bit, but she still performed <laughs> really well. Mm-hmm. Um, she also broke the school record for the two mile this year for us. So it was a great year for her. And as a junior, we're excited to see her next year. Yeah. Um, and then our guy side, Lance Harris, uh, he broke our school record in the two mile or no, the mile. Uh, no, going backtrack two mile. He broke the two mile for us as well for the There will be record. a test after coach. What's up? There will be a test after. Yeah, seriously. It's been a long, <laughs> long season. But yeah, Lance broke the two miles. So both of our two mile records fell, which is exciting to see. Yeah. Um, you know, Coach, um, while state competition is going on, I mean, obviously you've got a bunch of kids competing in multiple different events. I know you have a, a great staff of coaches around you, but I'm just curious, you know, what is your role once you guys are in the mix of state competition? Because of course, with a sport like track and field, there's obviously the individual aspect of it where you're kind of like, preparing and preparing and preparing, and then you go do the thing and then you continue on. It's not like basketball where you get a second half to sort of make adjustments or football, same thing, or any of those more strategic sports that involve more than one person. But uh, what is your role coach during state competitions? I mean, you just talking to the kids, you keeping them hyped up. What, what, what do you usually do when, when state's going on? 
You know, during the stay time, yeah, that's kind of the key point. It's to keep them relaxed and keep them like you've done this before. You know how to do it. Like we've done it countless times and trying to keep them calm and collected is probably the biggest thing for all of us coaches is just relax. Maybe talk about a little bit, especially in like the mile, the two mile of like your strategy, like, hey, stick to this person. You know, at this time, you're going to start moving a little bit and just talking through them and keeping them calm, I think is the biggest thing for us. Um, what about the section coach? You, you talked about obviously Mia setting a, a record amongst multiple divisions. Um, obviously, uh, that's very, very tough to do in the section alone, um, let alone to set it across multiple divisions, like I said. Um, so, so coach, I mean, what was your assessment of the section this year? How did you feel the competition was? And do you feel that uh, maybe the Northern Arizona sports are starting to make their impact a little bit on some of those schools down in the Maricopa area? We definitely are for sure. Um, this year we were a very young group. I mean, when we were sitting down doing like, cause we have an awards banquet tomorrow of like, all right, well, who's the outstanding freshman and to go, Oh my gosh, we have seven freshmen who went to state with us to go. Oh my gosh. Like this is a program that's definitely going in the right direction. Um, and it wasn't just one event. It was pole vault, high jump distance. Um, some of our sprinters are on the four by one. Uh, potentially for next year as freshmen. So um, we're going in the right direction. We didn't score a ton of points. We definitely from Mia Hall, Lance Harris, um, our four by eight teams, both boys and girls scored. So on paper, when you look at points, it doesn't look like we're heading the right direction. But when you look at the age, it, we have some heads turning, which is exciting. Well, talking about some of those uh, freshmen coming in, Coach, uh, I mean, obviously we'll talk about the senior class in a little bit, but along with Mia, I mean, who else are you looking to bring back next year and and how do you plan to grow this group going forward i mean just looking at our junior class again we have those uh stable distance kids and they're a lot younger but also a lot of my sprinters on the female side are returning as seniors which i'm excited about so we have alexis taylor cc garcia um audrey hutton lexi porter i mean i have this gr core group of multi athletes that are returning as their senior year which is exciting because uh, they qualified didn't make it to finals, but they qualified, which just means that next step, their senior year, we'll get there. Well, and then, you know, more so again, you know, kind of speaking more about this year's senior class. I mean, what did you tell that group after state competition? I know there's technically uh, more to the, to the, to the season, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but um, just, just real quick coach. I mean, what did you tell that senior group and what can you say uh, about that? Those, those kids coming through your program? Um, it was great. I think I had at the end of the year, about 20, a little over 20 seniors um, graduate this year. And a lot of them represented on that state team or still a varsity athlete for me. And just that they dedicated these four years, especially through COVID to still return and finish out their track season was a privilege to experience because they could have easily walked away. Yeah. Um, and we've seen that in multiple sorts of seniors that were like, I, I'm done. Yeah. COVID kicked my butt. I'm done. And for us to return back 20 plus was exciting to see that. And uh, congratulations for making it this far. Um, what about the law? You know, coach, obviously you're going to have some seniors graduating. Uh, anyone looking to compete at the collegiate level, anyone able to get a scholarship or, or it doesn't even have to be in track and field. I mean, anyone looking to compete at the next level or, or potentially just go to the next level in general? Yeah. So we have a handful. So Lance Harris is going to our next level. Um, we actually just signed Kevin Paul Estua last week. He's going to be running at CCC. It's their second year of that team. Nice. Um, so we have a small handful. Um, some going to a different sport. Scott Palmer is one of my seniors who's a jack of all trades. And I believe he's looking at hopefully getting picked up by a hockey team. Oh. Um, so a few random here and there, which is exciting to see them go to that next level. Well, coach, you know, uh, obviously there are multiple aspects of track and field regarding some of the events, um, you know, we, we cannot deny that the core of, of, of track and field, a lot of it is, is, you know, sort of things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives, walking, running, uh, maybe stepping over things if you're doing the hurdles. Uh, but I'm curious, coach, you know, it, it may not be as, as, you know, blanketed as an answer of like swimming or, or even like tennis or golf, but any long-term benefit to playing track and field? I mean, obviously we talked about some kids potentially competing at the next level. You already have a kid going to Coconino Community College to participate in their track and field program. Um, but I'm just curious, any long-term benefits that you see for, for kids, uh, for track and field. So this is actually something we, my coaching staff and I talked a lot this week about was just that we have a lot of athletes that are multi. So they do club basketball, they do club soccer, they do it for the high school of them taking a break and working with different muscle groups and just having that break from the constant same day thing is just tremendous. And I just wish I could drill it into some of these 
athletes and parents and club coaches of, you know what, taking that break to do something different is so good for them mentally. Um, and maybe they won't go on to the next level, but them getting maybe a little faster. Um, I had some of my soccer girls, I was kind of eavesdropping on. They're like, I'm so glad I did track because I feel faster. I feel like I explode better. Are they going on to the next level for track? No, but it gave them that opportunity to do something different. They got a little more explosive and hopefully it's going to help them in their soccer careers. Um, now convincing their parents that it was worth it. It's a different story, but um, it benefits them. Yeah. Well, I mean, even you see a lot of multi-sport athletes coming out for track and field. I know in my high school experience, a lot of football guys would go throw the shot put or, or, you know, be a couple discus throwers or, or some more of those. We didn't have, we didn't have javelin in California, but um, you know, a lot of those, those other events, like you say, and like pole vault or, or, you know, that's a vertical that can help with basketball that can help with uh, it, depending on what position you're playing in baseball for looking more towards the spring, you know, a vertical is always good. Like you said, coach, um, just sort of those, those little things, you know, they're working different muscle groups. They're, they're just doing different things and focusing in different areas. But again, we are speaking with Flagstaff high school track and field coach, Matthew Barkeen. The Eagles have wrapped up, uh, I'm going to say part one of part two of their state competition. Um, 27 made it into the state. There are seven who have qualified for the decathlon and the hepathon, hep, hepathlon. hepathlon. There we yeah. go. Hepathlon, which uh, let's talk about that right now, coach. So technically most of the season's done, but you've got seven great qualifiers going mm -hmm. for both the decathlon and the H alon word that I said earlier. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about both of those events. First off, let's start with the decathlon. How do these guys qualify? I know it's a boys uh, event, but. How did they qualify? Who's going to be running for you? And what does that look like? So it's kind of a cool little thing that the state of Arizona offers is they don't pay attention to division section. Uh, what they simply do is say, enter your kids and we will take the top 32. So you could be at a tiny little charter school or a big school like Chandler with 3000 kids, just whoever the top 32. So throughout the season, these athletes need to hit 10 different events. So they have to have competed in all 10 events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, the, me programmer then takes all of their best marks and says, okay, if we calculate that to the best scores, we'll take the top 32. Um, I worked with four males this year and all four qualified. So I have Ryan Hatch as a senior, Scott Palmer as a senior, uh, Ben Ketchner as a senior, and then Owen Firth, who is our junior. Very nice. And then uh, the, the other Alon word coach, uh, <laughs> the, the second event, which I know is the girls event. We talk about the three standouts you have uh, competing there. Yeah, so it's the heptathlon. So it's seven events for our ladies. Uh, this year, I worked with three athletes, Alexis Taylor, CC Garcia, and Cody Langdon, which Cody is a kind of interesting one. We weren't training her. Uh, she's a freshman. And then she would run and say, hey, I want to try something different. I want to try long jump. And we're like, oh, you're really good at that. And she's like, all right, well, I want to try hurdles. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're three-stepping on, on day two. I'm like, wow. okay. So it was partway through the year of like, you could do this. And I quickly, luckily we had enough meets left that I was able to throw her in to get all of her seven marks and she made it. Wow. Um, wasn't planning on it, but it worked out. Well, coach, you talk about uh, the, that, that player uh, picking up different events. Uh, I'm curious throughout the years that you've been com coaching this program. Um, are you seeing a lot more of that, of these kids coming in with these athletic abilities that, you know, even as freshmen, like you said, I, I, you know, these, these kids are coming in with these skill sets and they're embracing these other events and they want to do other things. Have you noticed that throughout the years where you're getting more athletic kids coming in as freshmen and sort of, you know, basically starting really from point B and going on to point C, as opposed to, you know, in other cases where you get a little less athletic kids where you're going point A to point C, but long, long convoluted question aside, coach, um, are you seeing more athletic kids coming out for your program? I think so. Um, I think the word's kind of spreading because my first year when we did, we started trying to train athletes. I only had a small handful. I only had a few. Um, and then this year, I mean, I put it out to the team. I'm like, hey, if you're interested in this very challenging event, let me know. And I can't take everyone. There was probably 12 athletes in total that reached out to me saying, hey, I would like to pursue this. Yeah. Um, I will it down to these seven. Well, I had eight and I will it down to seven. Of saying, okay, you have the athletic ability, but it's exciting because that, that number is growing. We're getting more athletes that come in that have the ability to do this, which is exciting because it's growing our program. Yeah. I'm, 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 it's, it's become a question that I've, I've had for a few coaches in multiple different sports, just because we're seeing a lot of freshman standouts, sophomore standouts, Mingus baseball team has got four or five sophomores that are 
really good. And they've got one freshman who, who is very solid. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm sure your program, you've got, you've talked about it. You've got kids who come in who, you know, they just know how to compete. They know how to compete well, or they're, or they've got that athletic ability to come in and, and make their impact early and have that ability to three-step on day two, or, you know, already figure out how to handle the long jump or, you know, come in with some experience on the javelin. So it's interesting. We are, we are seeing this sort of new group of, of freshmen coming in who, who are, are very, very talented. And, I, and it just makes sports here throughout the entire state, uh, just even more and more inter- entertaining and, and ever, ever so competitive. But uh, coach, getting back to those seven who are qualifying for the decathlon and the heptathlon, um, how are you preparing that, that group of seven for those competitions? I mean, at this point in the season, are you just kind of, you know, hey, what you've been doing is working or are you making some small adjustments? Small little tweaks. I mean, really this week, because it starts this Friday, Friday and Saturday, it's a two-day event. It's kind of just, hey, let's do a quick long jump approach. Let's just make sure it's fresh is probably the biggest thing. Relax. Um, Luckily, one of my former heptathlon athletes, Maddie Wilson, who goes to NEU, who just placed fourth nationals or for her conference meet, is going to come say hi to the kids tomorrow. Actually, no, today um, and say, hey, here's the event and here's how I manage it. So it's really, again, that mindset of relax. Um, Because the biggest thing with this event is you can't let one event destroy the meat for you. So if you had a bad moment in the 110 hurdles, you can't let that affect your next nine events. Bounce back mentally and just put forth that effort into your next event. Well, again, uh, Flagstaff High School track and field coach Matthew Barkeen. Coach Barkeen, uh, congratulations on finishing the 2022 season. I know it was hopefully a little less of a headache for you than 21 and 20, but uh, Congrats, 27 kids making this state. That's that's always great to hear. And good luck to the seven who are competing in the decathlon and the heptathlon uh, this weekend. We're talking to Coach Barkeen a little bit before then. So, Coach, safe travels. Thank you again for coming on the show. And it's always great to talk some Flagstaff track and field with you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. That's going to do it for this episode of Off the Bench. I'm your host, Philip Katafamo, wishing you a great rest of your week. We'll talk to you again next time.